Hi guys. Um, we are back. I think, is this week four? Yeah. Um, week four um, of our branding and marketing your business in 2020 series. Uh, Crystal is here with me, of course. Hi. Um, I wanted to start off by saying, you, you know, last week, as many of you know, Crystal and I launched our first, um, service with our new uh, company, The Beehive, which is a marketing agency for women-led businesses. It's a project we're really, really excited about. And I just wanted to thank you guys because you came out in support on the post that we did and interacted with um, the content that we put out and we really appreciate the support. Um, this, this group will always be free. These videos will always be free, um, but we do really appreciate it when you guys share and uh, support our endeavors outside. And we wanna do the same for you. So if you ever have anything coming up that you need support on, please don't hesitate to share it in the group with us and we will make sure we share your posts and get the word out there as well. Um, it's just, a, that was just a little aside. Um, so this week, last week we talked about messaging, um, and how to stay on message in your business, how to craft your message in your business. What's your unique selling proposition. Um, and this week we are going to continue on that theme, but we're going to talk about messaging and engagement specifically on social media, which is a very requested topic that we get often. Um, yeah, I'm going to kick it over to you, Crystal. Social media, it's such a, it's such a beast. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, it's always surprising to me to hear how much people hate it, but I love it. So it's, you know, when you really like something, it's hard to feel like it's a burden. Yeah. So I always have to remember there are people out there who hate it. They think it's strange to be, my wife hates it. She thinks it's overly social. She said, I don't want to be that social. It's weird. She believes that it's not very private. It's kind of intrusive. So I totally understand those concerns. And for some people, it's just hard. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to know what to post and when to post and what do I say and what do I do? So for some people, it's just, it's awkward. It's challenging. It's, it's hard. Um, but I believe that Claire and I have some really good kind of basic tips that will help take some of that overwhelm and some of that challenge out of it so that you can just kind of get to the basics a little bit easier on, on how to do it and how to do it more effectively. Yeah. And I think, I think specifically for like business and social media, that's where the frustration comes in is, is the, I usually hear one of two things. It's either I'm overwhelmed with creating the amount of content I need to create or a lot of the feedback I get is I like creating the content, but I'm not seeing any results. And so they feel like they're putting work into good content and it's just, it's not getting your business anywhere. Um, and those, both those things can be frustrating. You know, when you're putting a lot of your time and energy into something and you're not seeing a return um, and knowing what to post. And, and I think part of what can make social media a little bit easier is being very clear on your messaging and being very clear on what kind of content your business shares. Um, I like to pick five like primary topics that I want to talk about. Whatever business I'm posting on, whatever business I'm working in, whether it's my own business or a client's, I think it helps to kind of narrow it down to like, these are our values and these are what we talk about. So like, for example, with the beehive, I just did our content calendar yesterday so that Crystal and I can start making content for our own endeavors. And part of our talking points are going to be that it, uh, it were women led, um, that we are authentic, um, that we value community. And so by kind of laying out like, what are these five key components of your business? What are these five topics that you really want to talk about? And then you can, you can put your content organized by these topics. So let's say one of your five topics is community. So maybe once or twice a week, you're going to share an article about community, or you're going to create a post about how thankful or grateful you are for your community, or you're going to um, talk about what, what community has done for you that week. Um, so by putting it by taking it from, oh my gosh, I could post anything that's related to my industry and narrowing it down to these are the five topics that I really value and that my audience really resonates with. And then staying in those five like overarching topics. For me, that can sometimes take the overwhelm 
out of what is my messaging and what am I going to be talking about this week? Um, by just getting a little bit more specific in like, this is what this account talks about. I don't know. What are your, what are your tips for um, kind of taking, because, because it, when you sit at your desk, I do know that feeling. Um, we all get it sometimes, either writer's block or just not feeling very inspired that day. Or, um, and so when you kind of have these things of like, okay, I haven't done a post about community in six days, or I haven't done a post about women-led businesses in five days, it can kind of take out that overwhelm of, oh, I work in marketing. I could literally post anything about marketing. Um, well, I don't know. What are, your, what are your content tips, Crystal? Well, you know, and every, every person is different. So, you know, some, we, a lot of times we start at a generalized place and then we tweak it based on what everybody needs. But what I tend to do for my clients is very similar to that is I, I break out the bite-sized pieces of their business that are really valuable that we want to talk about. And then I break that down into, okay, we, we've got these topics, these sections right here, and then we'll make most of them educational, right? Which we'll try to do X number to have a video if, if that's applicable. We'll do some um, that are directly related to sales. Maybe we're trying to sell a specific program or a class or a routine or, or whatever it is and just kind of um, trying to break it down into that. Bite-sized pieces is always going to work better. I mean, nobody opens up a Kit Kat bar and just tries to shove the, okay, maybe I do try to shove the whole Kit Kat bar in their mouth. We Monster. break off a piece, right? We break off a piece and we bite it into bite-sized pieces because it's easier for us to enjoy and digest and it lasts longer. And it's kind of the same principle with your social media as you, you're, you're looking at the whole picture and you go, Oh my God, that's overwhelming. Anything would be overwhelming if you, I mean, if you threw all this content at me, it would be overwhelming until I sit down and say, okay, I'm going to break this down into sections. I'm going to break it down into topics, relevant things that are beneficial to the, to the community, to the people seeing it. And then I'm going to break those things down into saying educational sales. And every now and again, we need to have something promotional. Maybe it's a drive to get more likes, a drive to get reviews. Maybe we're going to do a giveaway. And then on top of that, I look into what are other people that are in the industry that provide the same kind of educational value that don't directly compete with you? And how can you bring their content in? How can you bring other people in? And then always, always, always know what your competition is doing. Not because you need to be fearful of saying, oh my God, they're doing all these things right. And I'm not. Inspiration is driven by inspiration. I don't wake up in the morning and look at the white tile floor and go, Eureka, 500 ideas. <laughs> I look at everything around me and I see something and I go, oh, that inspires me. Oh, that person was really smart. They did this. Ooh, I'm going to do that. So you, it's, it's totally, every artist that creates beautiful art, I mean, Michelangelo, right? He had something that inspired him. He had muses, right? Socrates, back from the Peloponnesian era, always had somebody inspiring these ideas that's good for you to do and it's totally okay. Yeah, absolutely absolutely. And and I think, you know, narrowing it down into like your five key topics can take out that overwhelm like like Crystal saying and um and Crystal brings up a good point. Um I think a lot of people this is kind of common knowledge at this point, but the 80/20 rule, 80% 80 of your content should be educational, awareness, helpful to your audience. Um and then 20% you can kind of come in and and do a little bit more of a hard ask or hard sales. Um, that's just kind of a good rule of thumb. It's going to be different for your business and you want to track uh, how your posts are doing. And if your promotional posts perform really well, especially if you have like a physical product and you're on Instagram, you can probably tag your product in the majority of your posts, right? Because it's not as much of a hard ask. Um, and then I think the second thing I want to talk about is I think when when I'm talking to a lot of business owners, a lot of the dialogue around social media is what do I post? What do I post? And, and while that is very important, um, I think we don't put enough emphasis on engaging in your social media and actually using your social media to form kind of an almost personal relationship with your customers and potential customers. 
um, commenting on their stuff, commenting on businesses that have good synergy with what you provide. Um, if you're on Instagram, following hashtags that are relevant to your business. So that relevant content comes up as you're scroll scrolling through your business newsfeed. Um, one of the hashtags I follow for the beehive is um, the boss babe hashtag. I'm not a huge fan of that hashtag, but there's a lot of my audience hanging out there. And so that's an opportunity to engage in conversation with them, see what they're talking about, listen, and kind of have my pulse on the heartbeat of like what the conversation is going on in my space. Um, and that can have tremendous value. On social media in addition to kind of having that one-sided conversation where you're just posting um, make sure you're responding to comments if your audience takes the time to engage with you talk to them talk back to them you know don't just post and leave it and, and never check it again so some of some of social media I think if you're overwhelmed by content you can get a lot of value out of posting just really good quality content two or three times a week, but then going out there and engaging with your audience as your business page. Um, this works especially well on Twitter and Instagram and LinkedIn. Um, Facebook, it's a little bit harder to interact as a business page with individual profiles. It's not to say you can't do it and you should, um, but if you're particularly on Instagram or Twitter or LinkedIn, um, this is a great way to get eyeballs on your social media profile without having to create new content because you're just engaging with the content that's already being created for your space, for your industry. Um, yeah, it is, uh, you know, there, oh, I'm just shuddering thinking about it. I, oh, I'm trying to be nice here. I can't stand to see businesses that are doing well, meaning people are commenting, they're sharing, they're liking in a significant number, and everything goes unanswered and just ignored. Do you know how that makes people feel? And I know some of you may say, well, it's just social media, but social media is so much more to a lot of people, especially younger generations, right? We have millennials and Zs, and you know, these people grew up with this in their face. They're more accustomed to communicating online than they are in person in a store. So when you ignore these people on social media, it's just like you complaining about Walmart because you went in and little Becky walked right by you and didn't say a word and could see you scratching your head and looking up because you can't find the dish soap and doing nothing <laughs> to help you. So it really is, it, it really is so significant because people are more and more adjusting to, I mean, by the time I'm 70, if I live that long, it's, we're going to be walking around with virtual reality headsets on and it's going to be so tethered to this digital world. And in the marketing space, I have to grow accustomed to that. I have to learn how to adapt to that and how to understand that. So, you know, even if, even if, even if it doesn't warrant a specific reply, just, you know, give it a like or, you know, take the time to say thank you for sharing or that's insightful or just something people want to be heard. And it's so easy for people to feel ignored on social media. Um, and, you know, the, the, the rule that Claire is talking about, 80-20 rule is an excellent rule to start with. I started social media uh, with that myself. But for each platform, I have actually three numbers. I have education and awareness. I have a transparency frequency, which is personal stuff about me. That's right. It's not related to the business. It's just me getting to know me. And then I have a sales figure and that's different on different platforms. On Facebook for me, it's 60, 20, 20. And on Instagram, it's 20, 70, 10. Like it's a very, I have unique numbers based on what I'm seeing and, and what I'm going for and all that. But some of you may be at that point and others, if you're kind of in the beginning stages, stick with that 80-20 until you start to kind of get some results and get comfortable with it and figure out where that needs to go. But I do like adding a third factor in there because we tend to focus a lot on education and awareness and sales, but we don't often talk about transparency enough, which is a, I think is a good segue into a next portion of the topic, which is <gasps> transparency because it's so important. Yeah, I mean, being authentic on social media is really important. And I think people, people are hungry for good content. They really are. And, and anything, 
I think, I think as business owners, there's sometimes this kind of fear based and I have it as well. Um, you know, we did a, when we did our self care series, I don't know if you guys remember, we did a whole, um, video on imposter syndrome. And I think sometimes, you know, this fear base is, um, not wanting to share too much about the triumphs and the struggles in our business or not wanting to share too much about what's going on behind the scenes. But uh, that transparency and authenticity, like Crystal and I are talking about performs really, really well on social media and, and just n- no posting it that you're going to have some people that don't like it. They're not your, they're not your customers. They're, they're not um, people who are going to work with you. And so I think getting a little bit out of your comfort zone, if you haven't been and kind of just going for it um, for a long time, I didn't really put any queer or lesbian content into, into my business content because I didn't think that it belonged there, but you know what? I've started putting it into my content more and my engagement and my reach and my um, likes and all that have, have increased by like 30% since I did because that's my audience. And, and as soon as I got real with them, um, it performed better. And so it is, it is, I do want to acknowledge that it is a little bit scary to get vulnerable and transparent. Um, but the return, especially on social media is, is there and available to you. Um, and the more you can kind of polarize in a good way, I don't mean, you know, posting inciting stuff or, um, or there's still a level of professionalism that applies to social media. But I think the more you can get really raw and honest, um, on there, the, the better off you'll, you'll be. Oh yeah. You know, and it, it's, uh, I like to call it the shadows of expectation and we're all victims of it as women, especially when we're younger. Um, you know, and I went off into the corporate world very early and, and got a big job with Verizon very, very early. And I was so terrified of being myself and I would dress a different way and try to act a different way because I thought that's what they wanted from me. I thought, well, I'm just supposed to go in there and just, I'm supposed to look like the other girls. And I just assumed I should just maybe act straight if I even know what that looks like. And it affected my performance. I was miserable because I was pretending to be what I thought other people wanted me to be, you know, and fast forward years later when I hung my own shingle and I, and you know, I hit, networking hard. And I thought, well, if I work predominantly with people that don't share my lifestyle, maybe they, but that was complete bullshit, right? Complete. Because as soon as you stand for what you believe in and you're authentic to look, this doesn't define me, but it's just the truth about me. And I'm going to be real with it. So many people will respect you for just being yourself. And it was a huge game changer. More people wanted to, to, more people wanted to work with me, more people referred me, and more people just freaking adore my level of sincerity when I'm genuine about the way that I feel all the time. Like I don't, it, it what you see is what you get. It's really simple. You kind of, you know, you, you just know me and they feel like they know me and they don't feel like I'm hiding things from them. And like Claire said, it's hard to do but it's really rewarding because generations are changing. Younger people care. If you haven't noticed, you know, in the political climate and on social media, younger people are more sensitive. They care more. They're more people. Young people are boycotting Amazon because they don't like Jeff with good reason. And they don't like this big corporate 1% company, even if they have the lowest price on products because they don't, the story doesn't resonate with them. Who it is selling it doesn't resonate with them. So as generations change and as your consumers change, you kind of have to give them what they want without losing your own authenticity. Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, if, I, I would say if, because we're, we're talking a lot of big picture stuff, which is, all, you know, all we can really do in a 20, 30 minute video. But if you're if you're not sure like what that might look like for your industry, go find a couple of accounts to follow that are in your space or are space you know a industry adjacent to you, and just just watch what they're doing. That's not to say copy them, but the best place to get inspiration um, is people in your space already you know successfully 
kind of doing it. Um, or accounts that maybe even aren't in your industry, but you really like their tone and you like how they communicate with their customers. The, the sooner you can start seeing social media as not just a place to toss content out about your business, but also a place for customer service and educating your customers and interacting with your customers one-on-one, -on -one, the more successful that you will see it in terms of translating to actual sales, revenue, growth, because who gives a crap about likes, right? And they're probably not even going to be on Instagram much longer. Um, likes do not translate to business. Getting in there and interacting with your, your potential customers, that's what's going to translate to business. I have worked on Instagram accounts with 200 followers and I've worked on Instagram accounts with more than 10,000. And some of the most engaged accounts I work on have like less than a thousand followers, but it's the right people that are following them. Um, and they're talking to them. They're having an actual conversation that's two-sided. Uh, so if you, if you can embrace social media as, as not just a place where it's overwhelming and you have to create content all the time, you can embrace it more as a tool that gives you direct access to your potential customers in a way we've never had before. Um, then I think it becomes a, a lot more exciting uh, and it becomes less about, oh my God, I've got to create content every day and more about I'm going to hop on Instagram and I'm going to scroll my business feed and I'm going to comment on posts I like, and I'm going to comment on, uh, you know, some of my clients who have interacted with me. Um, that can go a really long way. So I would say if you're overwhelmed with content, do a little less of it or do, or don't, but don't, don't put so much pressure on just that because there's so much more to managing your social media. Um, oh, absolutely. And you know, a lot of times when people think, and this is what makes social media tricky. And this is part of what makes it hard is, you know, uh, uh, your social media attributing to sales isn't, I paid X amount of dollars for a paid ad, this many people clicked, they went, they bought something. Yes, that's a model that's there. But outside of that, it's a little harder to measure. Social media is huge. I mean, huge. Uh, almost half the world's population is using, so I mean, it's massive. Where else can you get several billion people to connect in the same place? It doesn't exist. Social media is a great tool. It is your first impression. People don't see you in a room as much anymore. They go to social media. They are absolutely looking for you online. They're looking at your channels. They're looking at what people have to say. They're looking at, at, at ratings or whether or not people recommend you. It's a powerful tool. It's just as equivalent as your website. Chances are people may find you. They may go into Facebook and search for you before they search for your website. Especially depending on what industry you are. Real estate, restaurant, food service, some is way more common than others. So you, it, it is important. It is a first impression. And just like Claire said, Get on there and interact with people. Scroll through your newsfeed. Follow people. I follow so many people that are in the same industry as me that I think are better than me and bigger than me. And I, I love it because I'm always learning and I'm always absorbing. And I comment on their stuff and I share. And it's, it's such a powerful tool. You can learn from it. You can teach people from it. And, and it's, it's a huge way to grow your sales because it's, really a part of your brand. It's a part of your professional brand and your personal brand. And it just really, really, really is that important. It really is. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I, I think the final thing I will add is less but better is the rule on social media. So if you're trying, if, if you have a local business or you have a small or medium sized business and you're trying to do this successfully on five social media platforms, dump three of them, really do some research on your industry, see where sales are performing best. Um, if you're product based, it's going to be Pinterest and Instagram. If you're B2B, it's going to be LinkedIn um, and Instagram. I do great sales on Instagram. Um, it absolutely can be leveraged for business. Um, but, but do less. Pick, pick two platforms, especially if you're managing on your own. Pick two platforms where you're having the most success and really double down there. Um, instead of trying to like, well, how, well what am I going to create for Twitter now? What am I going to create for LinkedIn now? And what am I going to create for Instagram now? And it's too much. Um, so that, that would be my final advice. If you're feeling overwhelmed and you're trying to post on all these different platforms, ditch some of them. 
Absolutely. Probably, probably not bringing you the return you need anyways. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say I ditch them, meaning I don't even have a, a Pinterest account anymore. I was just like, no, that's a bit too visual. That's too, too much visual. Uh, I don't market on Tumblr anymore. I don't market through, Sna I couldn't stand Snapchat anyway. I'm sorry. I'm just a little too old for the whole I don't know, but I, it's not you really know, our demographic. No, it's not. But I just, you know, I have four main platforms that I use Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and, and Facebook and LinkedIn is, or excuse me, Instagram is more where I do a lot of my fun personal stuff. And, you know, I've got some funny YouTube videos and a lot of video game content and I kind of plug it there more. So Claire is that wonderful closing advice. Claire is giving you it. It's, it's, it's okay for you to dump things and add things and tinker with things. And, but if you're feeling overwhelmed, do something about it. Cause it's insanity to just say, well, I'm going to continue plugging along being overworked and not knowing enough about this, scale it back, start smaller and let, let yourself, let yourself have room to breathe. Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, thank you guys so much. Just a quick reminder that there is a worksheet that goes along with these videos. It's a marketing audit worksheet that you can go through to see just where you're at in your business and what you can, what you can improve on, what you currently have. It's, it's a great little checklist. It's like three pages long. You can fill it out in like 20 minutes. And then these videos align with the topics that we're going over in there. So you can take notes as well and uh, use that for actionable items on how to improve whatever you don't check off on the marketing audit. So grab that. I will throw the link below. Um, and then finally, this is, we don't pitch often to you guys, but I think it's an exciting opportunity that could be a good fit for some of the women in here. Crystal and I are running um, a social media management service uh, promotion right now. The first um, 10 women to grab a spot in the management service will get it for $500 a month instead of $1,500 a month. And you can lock that price in for a year. Um, we are capping it at 10 spots. So once it fills, they will be gone. But um, we'd love to have some of you guys jump in there. And I posted the link in the group so you can search it in the group or I'll also post that below this video as well. So grab the free worksheet. Take a look at the social media management service. See if it's a good fit for you. Um, there's some criteria on there to let you know if, it, if it's the right fit for you or not. Um, and uh, DM either one of us if you have any questions on any of this stuff. So thanks so much, guys. Bye. Bye.